Aye. What's up everyone, I'm Ole England and today I'm trying out the Neural DSP Quad Cortex and with that here, how it fares with metal tones. For the people who have no idea what this is, the Quad Cortex is a guitar amp modeler and an effects unit in a very sleek and small box. And let's get this straight, I received this unit for free from Neural. Actually they've been really aggressive with sending out the Quad Cortex to YouTubers and artists before the actual release. There's already been a bunch of YouTube channels that have done videos of this unit. It's an extremely hyped product and with that I wanted to wait a little before I release and make any sort of video of this thing because I just don't want to get carried away with the hype. I'm a very very big fan of the Neural DSP plugins. I think they make the absolute best software based amp sims uh, for metal I've tried so far. So when I got to play the Quad Cortex at last winter NAM, I was extremely excited but after I tried it there I just wasn't convinced. The size of the thing and you know the turning foot switches and all that, all that is cool but I just wasn't as impressed with its sound. And now we're here a bit over a year later and everyone is talking about this unit, everyone has been waiting for it. The question is, would it be the Cyberpunk 2077 of guitar amp modeling <laughs> or will it deliver to its promise? I just want to be a little bit honest, I'm a little bit skeptical when it comes to the Quad Cortex. The modeler market out there is just heavily dominated by you know Fractal Audio and Line 6 and if you're a follower of my channel you probably know that I'm using Fractal products for both studio and live. So this being Neural DSP's first physical modeler as well as combined with my mixed experience at NAMM a year ago, I'm a little bit skeptical. If you check out the feature set of this pal, I must say it's incredibly impressive. Much like the, the Kemper, uh, you can tone capture amplifiers and pedals, so you can capture amplifiers. You can run four amplifier modelers at the same time together with stereo reverbs and you know four cabinets and all that. They say it's the most powerful modeler on the market right now. You know the looks, the size, which is very important to me by the way, <laughs> the size matters, okay. It seems to be a very exciting and impressive product. But at the end of the day, and I guess the main reason why I'm here today is that I want to hear and feel how it is to play in a metal aspect. I'm also going to capture a couple of pedals and rigs, show you how to build a preset from start to finish, as well as show you a preset I made for a band situation. That's what I'm going to cover in this video, so if you want to hear clean soundscapes and you know stuff like that, I'm not going to go and show that in the video. There are already a bunch of other videos out showing this. I'm just here for the metals, okay? So let's just start, man. Right now I have a preset called Dual Amps and Cabinets which has two amplifier signals going here with an overdrive and then they're coupled with four cabinets. So okay how much CPU are we using right now? This might be interesting to check, 36%. Right. Let's try a couple of presets. I mean it's fairly simple to just navigate through this thing. You can either change presets like going up and down like this but you can also hold here 
And you have the factory libraries, my presets and all of that in here. Let's just check the factory library real quick. PV lead. <laughs> Okay, seems like it has a room reverb happening. I can bypass that like this. Let's take a second and talk about the factory presets. First thing, I didn't find any metal factory preset that I liked <laughs> when I was browsing through this thing. But I mean, that goes for all the other modelers as well. I mean, it's very rare that you get impressed by any factory tones. It's not until you make your own preset to match the tone that you have in your head that you'll know if the unit sounds good or not. But also with that said, I struggle a little bit with the factory cabinet impulse responses that are in this thing. It's not that they sound bad, it's just that I just couldn't find a good sound uh, very fast, in a way. I found that it, it was just a lot easier in the individual, you know, neural DSP plugins that they released. So... Let me just build a preset, okay? So I go here, create new. We have a very simple single path going right there. Can you see? Huh? Okay, no. You can't see. So what do I do? To add things, I just push like this. Very simple. Cabinet. Okay, let's take a 4 by 12 Let's add an amplifier. Amp. Uh, Freeman lead. Wasn't that simple? No? Okay. <laughs> Let me add an overdrive as well. Uh, green 808. And as you can see, you can use these, the foot switches, to change the parameters of the different sections of the, uh, your tone. So... I mean, you can still use the... Uh, like this, like as a touch screen, but it's nice to have this. Okay, sounds pretty good. There's some noise. Let's remove some noise. Uh, we have simple gate. Quiet. How long did that take me to make this preset? No, not too long, I guess. Maybe like one minute or so. Let's try another amplifier. KPV uh, 5150. <laughs> Editing any of these blocks, just release, you just click like that. Turn the knobs. <laughs> Okay, we got this. Good, then we go to the cabinet section. Where you can shut off and on individual microphones of the cabinets. So. And easy as this, you move around the microphone and where it's pla like the placement on the speaker. So that is really cool, it's just really easy. That sounded really good, actually. Okay, let me switch up the uh, amplifier. EVH. Okay, let's switch guitar to something drop tune, okay? Tremor verb right there. Uh, do the rectifier. Okay, one more. You might feel like there's not really that many amplifiers on here. Well, we're gonna get to that, okay? Let's 
pick this one. Right now, we're only using the internal amplifier models that are in here, but we can also use the neural capture captured amplifiers as well. So if you thought that, oh, you know, there's not too many amplifiers on this thing. I mean, look at this. It's only these 200 or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not 200. But anyways, what you can do is that instead of picking an amplifier modeler, you can pick a neural capture instead. So neural capture right there. Uh, we go to factory captures. I mean, look at this. Here we have like a Uber shell, which are basically like an instance of, of an amplifier setup. So much like a Kemper profile in a way. Engel Marty Freeman, you see many, 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 many. Engel Rainbow, Nomad Chief, Fried, Fryet, I guess. <laughs> XFX, I guess. Orange Rocker Verb. Oh. Paul Reed Smith, uh, MT-15. Okay, I think Banger is probably Bogner. <laughs> Banger, I love that. And the neural capture doesn't have to be necessarily an amplifier. It can also be an overdrive. So you can see here, there's a bunch of Ibanez tube screen models in here as well. So here's a preset I made with my own impulse response. <laughs> What is it? It's a uh, dual rectifier uh, channel 3 vintage and a, a Freeman uh, overdrive. <laughs> Sounds very Ola, I must say. But yeah, as you can see, it's very easy to work the interface if you want to add different modules and effects in this thing. And I would say it's probably one of the more innovative ways of controlling a model and, you know, twist and turn the foot switches like this. I think that's very, very clever. I just hope that these foot switches will be rigid enough for being stepped on during a live show. All right, so let's talk about the capturing aspect of this. So one of the features of the Quad Cortex is the ability to capture amplifier setups and even pedals. So I've captured a couple of different ones for my video. Uh, and I'm also sparing you the capturing process because it's pretty lengthy. Uh, it's simple, but it just takes a while to do it. The process itself, all in all, is pretty much how, you know, you do it with a Kemper. Uh, you plug in the device that you want to capture, and then you reference listen the capture version versus the uh, original gear. So I decided to capture this, which is uh, a DAE Duality DX overdrive that I've been toying a little bit with, and I also did the heavy metal HM2. I'm just gonna say this overdrive that I did a capture of, the Quad Cortex managed to capture this uh, overdrive, but I, I must say, it, it was my first capture that I did, and I didn't get that close to the original sound of this thing. So, you know, I was like, okay, maybe I did it wrong. So I tried out uh, the next pedal, which is the Boss HM2. This is made in Japan, by the way, so the best type of Boss HM2. And when I captured this, it sounded way more close to the original. I guess it kind of depends on what type of pedal and uh, you know amplifier you're doing on how well the quad cortex um, it captures that. So I'm going to show you my HM2 preset that I have right here. So the HM2 in this case is this neural capture a part of the signal path right here. So I can bypass it. So this is the sound without my captured Boss HM2. And then this is with the Boss HM2 capture. So in regards of pedals, uh, 
mixed results when it comes to, to the capturing section of it all. The Boss Station 2 worked really well. This pedal did not work that good, I must say. You came pretty close, but it didn't give the effect of an overdrive that I want. But with these two pedals tested, I also wanted to try out to capture my amplifier setup. So I have my amplifier setup right here that I've been using to reamp my new album, uh, Star Singer. And it's a Mesa Boogie Badlander and a TS9 Ibanez. So I'm going to start by creating a new. And the cool thing about this, when you have a neural capture uh, together with, you know, a cabinet, you can capture the cabinet impulse response as well, or like the microphone that you're using. So with that said, when you're actually going to use the sound, you only need one block. So I'm going to use the Ola Star Singer. So it's just this one block. And this is my captured. Mesa Badlander and my Ibanez Tube Screamer right here. And you can go in and adjust like any other amplifier. I guess it's going outside the captured tones, uh, you know, original tone if you start tweaking around with these, but it's nice to have a couple of extra options. <laughs> So I'm going to make a direct comparison and you can listen and decide yourself what you think about this capture. Here's the original sound of my rig. I have my guitar plugged in straight into my Ibanez Tube Screamer and Badlander. It sounds like this. And this is the amplifier captured by the quad cortex. So in my ears, there is a small little difference between the two more about the response of how it feels to play the amplifier. It feels like there's a little bit more uh, of a natural growl in the real amplifier and maybe a bit more of a, uh, a little bit more gain in the captured amplifier for some reason. I don't know why. Now, will this really matter when you use it and you haven't heard the reference app? It's pretty close. Comparing them side by side, you're definitely going to hear a difference between the captured amplifier and the real amplifier, but that difference is really, really small. And, you know, if I can take my amplifier tone with me on stage and play live, I mean, then that small little difference wouldn't matter that much, I would say. So one thing that Neural are claiming is that the unit is powerful enough <coughs> to run four amplifier models at the same time, which basically means that you could, as a band, use one quad cortex unit for the whole band when you're playing live. Not only would that be economical, but also you would only need to bring this as a touring rig for everyone in the band. So I've made this preset right here, which basically contains three different signal paths. Uh, this is the first one right here. Where I'm using my Star Singer, my Mesa Badlander capture right here. And uh, so that's all that happens on that channel right there. On the second channel, I have uh, input two right here. I have this guitar. So let me switch over to this one. You just have to imagine that we're all playing at the same time. And just for the sake of it, I put an amplifier here, a Freeman 100 lead and a cabinet. I also have a delay on this channel. And then, on the third single path right here, I have a bass guitar. Let me get that bass guitar here. So here on the third line, you have the bass guitar. So basically, I can use this live 
with my band. So say if uh, the Haunted would go and, you know, go completely uh, direct to front of house, we will be able to use this thing. Either you can go uh, to a, a stereo output like this, output one or two, or you can split them up and, you know, give them each a separate output and then you can do, uh, you know, panning and all of that at the front of house desk if that makes any sense. So that aspect of this is really cool. And I'm also going to check the CPU meter for this, uh, which is at 34% right now, which means there's still a lot to go. So let me see if I can add another single chain right here and some amplifiers and shit. Amp, bam, cab, boop. Okay. Now we're at CPU 45%, but we're having like three different cabinet instances. We have two amplifiers and two neural catchers engage all at the same time. So CPU wise, it seems that it can handle you know, four different signal paths. For a unit this size, that's pretty impressive, I must say. What started as me having quite a skeptical look about this unit, uh, I think I'm softening up to it. What impresses me the most is the fact that yes, it seems to be able to handle several amplifier modelers working at the same time. My Fractal FM3 can't handle that, for instance. And I mean, that is the direct competing product, I would say. For me being in a band, I find this really interesting because that means that the full band can use this single unit to get a live sound going. For a fly-in show where you really have no idea what you're getting for backline at a gig, it's really saving a lot of space and money that you only have to bring this one thing for two guitar players and a bass player. I think the Quad Cortex has a really clear advantage over other modelers in regards of this aspect. Regarding the sound of the Quad Cortex, it, it sounds good, but replacing a real amplifying cabinet, it does not. But it's definitely on par with the other modelers that are out there at the moment. And in terms of tone, I think my expectations of the Quad Cortex was that I would be able to get the same tone that I got from their plugins in an easy way. But it's definitely not as simple as that. You will have to work a little bit harder to get where you want. So conclusion, is this the groundbreaking unit that we've all been waiting for? Definitely not. <laughs> is it a cool product? F yes. I think it's a great alternative and a great start to uh, Neural DSP's venture into the modeling world in hardware form. I definitely do not mind that we get more competition in this field together with, you know, Kemper and Line 6 and Fractal Audio. Personally, I would probably have to work with it a little bit more before I decide if it's something I'm going to use or not. So there you go. That's my Quad Cortex video uh, in a metal aspect. Hope you enjoyed it. I might do more videos. We just have to see. I have to work a little bit more with this unit and to, you know, to basically dwell into it and see if it's... Uh, maybe I can make a video of something else. If you have a request, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.